Hey y'all, welcome to the Ultimate Family History Flowchart. So this is something that I created to help everyone find their niche in family history and not get overwhelmed by all of the different avenues that you can go down. So here's the flowchart. <clears throat> I'll have a link in the description below to uh, download this so that you can blow it up and uh, uh, see it in its full context. But it all starts off with one question, which I find is a common question for all of these different avenues. Um, how much time are you willing to sacrifice to the Lord? Is this going to be a one-time activity, five to 10 minutes a day, 10, 30 minutes a day? Or are, do you have a lot of time that you can dedicate to uh, family history, genealogical research, uh, one to two plus hours a week? So uh, once you uh, figure out how much time you're willing to sacrifice, you go down uh, that avenue. So say you have five to 10 minutes a day, um, I asked you a question, would you rather focus on your own family tree or on general projects? And so uh, let's say it's uh, general projects. Um, it says, are you better with geography or patterns? If you're better with geography, then standardizing is a perfect fit for you. Uh, you can do it in five minutes a day um, versus if you're better at patterns, reverse indexing is a cool new feature that uh, we'd love to introduce you to. So. I'm just going to go through each of these um, programs just to kind of get you excited in either one. So again, in the description below, I'll have the links to jump directly to um, each one of these in, in the timeline here. So here, let's start off with one-time activities. So say you're doing a youth group um, mutual activity or a family reunion activity, and you just need something for a big group. Um, and it's just going to be uh, a one-time thing. So deep nostalgia is an awesome feature. Um, as you can see here, you can animate uh, uh, still photos from your ancestors. There's lots of different animations that you can do, uh, and it's all within the My Heritage app on Android or iOS. Um, it, Sometimes it's a little creepy, sometimes it's pretty fun, um, but it's a, a great way to connect and share um, uh, those memories in, in a new and exciting way. This is some Harry Potter level stuff. All right, compare a face is an excellent way to um, see how much your face uh, compares to your ancestors. So again, it all depends on um, uh, your face. So um, it's interesting to upload like baby photos of yourself, teenage photos of yourself, uh, adult photos of yourself, etc. And compare those against your ancestors and see who's a, a best match. Sometimes you get matched with some really horrendous looking people in the tree, um, which is a great plug to try to find more pictures of your ancestors, find good uh, uh, face shots of them and, and get those uploaded and it would have a better chance at recognizing and, and distinguishing those facial features. Map My Ancestors is available on uh, the mobile app for Family Tree. And so it's going to, to pull up your map and you can see there, there's a lot of uh, dots with numbers on them. That's how many ancestors are in that town. Uh, they have some, some connection to that town. So you click on that and it'll bring up a list uh, there at the bottom of all of those people. And you can click on one. And once you select one ancestor, it will pull up all of the different uh, places that, that they're connected to in life. So where they were born, it'll have a place where they died. It'll have a place where um, they moved to uh, based on census records, et cetera. Uh, that's why all of this source attaching that we're doing is, is populating these maps. And so this is a, a great way uh, for group activities to uh, family reunions is, is an excellent one where you can kind of travel around to some of these um, places that your ancestors lived. Relatives around me, I mean, everyone uh, pretty much has had experience with this. Uh, when you're in a big group of people, uh, especially those that you don't know, it's a great way to pull up Family Tree app and uh, click on the more button and click relatives around me. And you can see how you are related to uh, the people around you. Um, you can see here, this was from a, an, a party last year that we pulled this up and um, we're, we're all pretty distant cousins on, on this one. Well, I guess third cousin is, is pretty close. Um, but anyway, a great way to connect and, and start the conversation uh, with people around you. 
also a great way to avoid dating your first or second cousin if you don't know him. <laughs> All right, RLL indexing is developed by the BYU Record Linking Lab. That's what the RLL stands for. And um, this is a great way to uh, kind of get involved in indexing uh, in a very uh, elementary uh, way. So there's two different indexing apps. This is the RLL indexing, and we'll show you reverse indexing here in a minute. RLL indexing gives you one image and three different options that it, the computer thinks is a match for that, um, that information from a census or any kind of record. And what you're gonna do is choose one of the three options or manually type in what it is. So you can see here on the first one, it says servant, but uh, the options are farm, farms, and barman. Uh, those just don't, aren't a match. Uh, the computer did not recognize the handwriting that well. So I typed in servant manually and clicked enter. Um, versus some of the other ones that the, the middle two, it did have the option there in, in the middle to, to choose from. And then the, the last one here, office was also um, not one of the options. So you had to type it in manually. Anyway, it's a great way to um, uh, do this in five minutes a day. Say you're waiting for lunch or um, you're waiting in line at the, the supermarket, whatever. You can pull this up. RLL indexing, you can uh, add it to your home screen. So it's just a one tap thing and it goes right to it. And you can index quite a few little records here. It doesn't require a family search account or anything. Uh, it's a great way to just kind of get started in indexing and recognizing handwriting patterns. Recipe discovery is a great uh, activity. We do this uh, in our ward on Wednesday mornings with our youth. Uh, we, we try to find pioneer recipes and cook them, et cetera, and, and tell stories about our ancestors. Um, but recipe discovery is a great group activity for, uh, for lots of different groups. Um, tasting what your ancestors tasted uh, it's surprising, but it's a great way to connect with them and uh, keep their, their memories alive through, through our senses. Primary boxes is another great way to uh, pass on our, our memories and heritage to the younger generation. So this is something that we developed in our ward where we take a, a simple youth activity for, for all primary aged kids and we create these boxes and deliver them out to uh, each of the, the primary kids. Uh, it's a great thing to do during like COVID shutdowns, et cetera, where you can send these out, um, uh, even though we're, we might not be meeting in, in our homes, et cetera. Or it's a great way to just keep connecting. So these are kind of subscription boxes. You can see uh, in that bottom left-hand corner, um, they choose which box they want next. They have four different options. Uh, so they might want a, a journal kit their next time. They might want a make a, your own family crest kit next time or a discovery box about a certain ancestor, etc. Uh, we include markers and crayons and glue sticks. Anything that they need to complete the box um, is all inside. Ordinance is ready. Um, most of us have had an experience with this. This is a great way to um, find um, the, the people that are ready to take to the temple, um, whether it be baptisms, initiatory endowments or ceilings. Uh, it'll search through your tree to see if there's already somebody that um, has one of the, the green temple icons. If not, then it'll pull from uh, your, your temple district or uh, the general tree as well. But it, it just gives you a name to, to take to the temple. Um, you do need to, to kind of research those out and make sure that they're not duplicates or, or they um, uh, need more sources, et cetera. But that, that's really easy and you can get with a, a ward consultant to do that. Um, but most of these are, are just ready to take to the temple, especially during COVID. Um, Many people have been working on the tree, but not uh, submitting the, the names to their temple. And so um, uh, most of these um, that pop up on Ordnance Ready are, are golden. They're just ready to take. All right, and then Relative Finder. Um, this one does require a computer and um, a family search account. But as soon as you do, um, you can uh, see how you are connected to constitution signers or American presidents. Uh, profits. You can also create your own groups. Um, like I've created one for our ward. And so we can click in there and it'll show us how we're all related. 
Uh, it's a great way to, to connect and, and find just new uh, relations. Uh, it gets the conversation flowing. And then we hemmed into some games. So Jenny Operty, a great thing to play for family home evening, uh, family reunions, etc. cetera. Um, so th this is going to auto populate. Uh, what a handy feature, seriously. Um, it's gonna auto populate from your family tree. Uh, you have to sign in with your family search credentials and uh, it gives you just a quiz, uh, a, a Jeopardy style quiz um, that will ask you different questions on your ancestors. It's so fun. Uh, Wheel of Family Fortune, um, you're, you're solving for, for different things each time, but like this one, it says that this person was born in 1866, so it's going to be a first name and a last name, and you can choose how many players, and you spin the wheel, etc., um, and play it just like Wheel of Fortune. Ancestor Games is so handy. We use this for primary boxes, for uh, quiet books, for lots of different things. So uh, you can choose to, to make a matching game, uh, coloring pages, crossword puzzles, word searches, word scrambles, uh, family photo shoot puzzle things. Uh, it, it's all so easy. They've, they've made some really great tools to uh, uh, make it handy to connect with uh, our ancestors. All right, now we're moving on. If you have five to 10 minutes a day, these are some great activities for you to do. So patriarchal blessing analysis, this is amazing. I can't tell you how many blessings that this has, has brought forward through our youth and our ward. Um, so this is not in family search, but in your church account, uh, churchofjesuschrist.org, if you log in and then click on patriarchal blessings, you can view yours, but you can also request those of your direct ancestors um, that are deceased, you can't do living. Um, but anyway, you request it and two weeks to a couple months later, you'll get them back. Um, uh, mine took a, a, quite a while, just this last time I requested a couple and it, it took a couple months to get them. So be patient. Uh, but anyway, you can view those blessings. And then something that's really great is to just go and, and analyze them. So I have a worksheet that, um, that helps you to do that if you'd like, where, um, Oh, highlight all of the promised blessings that are in yours and your ancestors and kind of compare those. Um, any spiritual gifts that are promised in either one, uh, are they hereditary? Are they passed down from father to son and, and, and then to me kind of thing? Or anyway, there's, there's lots of different ways to analyze patriarchal blessings that um, really connect and, and show you that, that your ancestors might have had the same struggles or the same gifts and blessings uh, promised to them and how you fit into the, the bigger picture. Record hints is <laughs> kind of my main focus all the time. It, it's just something that, that I love to do. So there's a few different tools. Um, on the left-hand side is the GeoHint record source map uh, developed by the BYU Record Linking Lab. And uh, it, it just gives you, uh, you can search by surname or by county. And um, so right there, I have searched for the surname Briggs and it shows everywhere on the map that they have a record hint that needs attached to them. So um, it means that there's an indexed record, somebody indexed uh, a census or, or some sort of record, and it thinks that it's a match for this person. And all you need to do is go through and, and connect the people up and attach those sources. Super simple. Um, I have lots of different videos on, on that process if you'd like to, to watch those. Um, also, in Family Search itself, you can go to um, this part of the website and it'll give you blue record hints from your family tree. The other one is given you either by surname or county, but they're not necessarily connected to you in any way. Uh, they might be with your surname, but um, in Family Search, these ones are. These ones are directly in your family tree and uh, to, to work that way if you'd prefer standardizing or uh, sometimes known as improved place names is a great way to, to kind of start um, cleaning up the tree. Um, these are going to give you random batches of 10. These are not connected to your family, but you can manually do this in your family tree if you want to as well. Um, but this is a handy way to uh, check out 10 batches. It takes five minutes if, if, <laughs> if that. And um, what you're going to do is uh, click on select standard place there 
and it'll give you a list of places that it might match and you're going to choose the best one or, or type one in manually that, that fits best. Here you can see that this one's in, in Japan and it doesn't recognize probably the abbreviation for Japan is, is what I'm guessing there. And so when you click on that, it wants uh, a standardized place so that the computer can search uh, for um, these uh, names and places a lot better. And then reverse indexing is also developed by the BYU Record Linking Lab. This is a great way for uh, youngsters to get involved in indexing without having a family search account and um, uh, without having to index a full batch of lots of different handwriting. So here we can see in the upper left-hand corner, um, it'll give you a random surname or you can type in whatever surname you'd like. Here I typed in Briggs and this is what I encourage all uh, youth and, and adults to, to do is become a master of your own surname. So type in my surname there and, and look at all of the different options that it brings up and you wanna all 12 of these to match up exactly to what was typed in in the upper left hand corner. A lot of times the computer can't read the handwriting of Biggs, B-I-G-G-S, uh, without the R and so that's gonna be an incorrect one. So anytime that you find an incorrect one, uh, you click on it and, and you'll see that it marks it as incorrect. And when you're ready, go ahead and submit the batch and it'll submit those 12 names. Um, it's a great way to, to start recognizing handwriting styles and cursive and um, indexing without having to have a family search account. Children as young as eight uh, typically are, are the ones best suited for um, reverse indexing. Such a fun project to do. All right, so if you have 10 to 30 minutes a day, these projects are for you. Uh, dead end research. So Pazilla and Descendancy View in Family Search is a great way to uh, visualize and see where dead ends are. And then uh, it just takes some, uh, some quick training how to research those dead ends, finding sources and, and records using Ancestry and Family Search and all the other apps and tools uh, to really find where those are. Um, with record hints, you can typically find some, some tree extending hints to, to really branch it out really quickly. Uh, it's not as daunting as, as it might seem. So uh, give, it, give it a shot. Use Pozilla. Uh, just the free basic services are, are great. There's also the premium um, uh, paid services if you want those as well. Four generation discovery. I just made a video on uh, all about four generation discovery. Uh, go ahead and watch it. But uh, connecting with our four generation ancestors, especially if they've already had their temple work done, we often skip over them and don't really um, uh, do their work. Well, we're, we're moving on. We got to get the, the temple work done. But connecting with our four generation ancestors helps us recognize their voices and distinguish their voices from that of the spirit and um, help us to recognize our, our ministering angels and, and to call upon their name uh, to help us in family history work. Such a, a great uh, a way to, to do that. Record Quest is a, a fun uh, computer-based game uh, that set up kind of like a video game and uh, gets uh, everyone connected to, to their ancestors through, through that medium, uh, a great way to connect there. This is Family also kind of does um, somewhat of a, a virtual or video game style uh, thing. This is on an iPad and um, it helps you to branch out your family tree, create avatars, etc. cetera. Um, anyway, great way. Uh, finding missing children. Um, anytime that you see one of these research suggestions in purple saying that there's a possible missing child, um, these are excellent. Uh, how many times do, does one census miss a, a child and then the next census has that child etc on there maybe it's a grandkid living with the parents but because their actual parents weren't on that census that child gets skipped over or something and so um this is a, a we have a really big need to find missing children missing babies we can search through um birth records uh, stillborn records um journal accounts or reading journals is a great way to find out if if somebody had a miscarriage or or lots of different variety of things um but finding the missing children is 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 crucial into to filling out our trees memories is excellent to um really connect uh, without a photo video story it's really hard to connect with our ancestors and so um, uploading memories 
you know, whether your own, your family, your community. Uh, anyway, it's just a great way to, to get involved and um, discover your ancestors in new and, and meaningful ways. Live indexing is, uh, it takes a lot of work. It's, it's gonna be kind of hard to set up, but uh, once you do it once, you can replicate it a thousand times. So this is using the youth battalion in your ward. And um, so we all have shoe boxes full of memories or file cabinets full of documents, et cetera, that need uploaded to family search. But for one person, especially somebody that might be scared of a computer or uh, scared of messing something up, uh, maybe they don't have enough time. Uh, enlisting the youth battalion to do a live indexing event is so fun. So you gather up all your youth uh, for a youth activity and uh, bring all of the documents that you've previously worked with the uh, shoebox owners uh, with. And you, you get all cataloged ahead of time, uh, get everything set up, and then uh, set up a room in um, for each type of of documents. So you have a room for pictures, a room for uh, certificates, a room for stories, etc. And then those youth bring their phones, you can have computers set up there, scanners, etc. And just go to work. And by the end of the night, you hand over a USB uh, flash drive or a CD or something with all of those things over to the person. And everything's already on family search tagged and ready to go. Um, these are, are great ways to, uh, to um, get a lot done in a, in a short amount of time. Our youth are ready and willing and, and they're much more capable than us adults. Goldie May, such a fun tool. I, I can't tell you how much I have enjoyed this one. So Goldie May, there is a volunteering option that works with the BYU Record Linking Lab. And it is a Google Chrome extension. I have a video on how to install it and how it works. But um, what it's doing, it's looking through a given census and if it finds a family that where none of the family is currently on family search, it helps you go through and add all of those in automatically. All you gotta do is click a couple buttons and, and watch it work. You need to, to make sure that the computer attaches everyone. It, sometimes there's a, a little glitch where it might not attach a cousin or, or something like that. Um, and so you just click a button, watch it work, and then, um, see if there's any errors that, that need fixed. If you are scared of a computer, this is for you. This is a great way to just look at, at how the computer does things and just observe. Um, there, there's no threat of messing something up. Uh, if, if the computer didn't do it quite right and you're just like, I don't know what's going on, you can just skip it. Like, don't worry about making a mistake with Goldie Mae. This is an awesome feature to uh, really add lots of unconnected people to the tree and, and help out so many families uh, get connected in. If you just need computer basics, uh, your ward consultants, your youth consultants, um, the, the family history guide is, is also a great way to get started with computer basics. Uh, you know, if, if that is a challenge for you, uh, getting started in family history work, don't let it be. Let, our consultants are so ready to, to help you get started and, um, and be patient because um, you know, none of us want to look dumb or we, we get nervous when uh, they say a right click and, and you have a trackpad or something and you just don't know what a right click even means. Um, don't be scared to, to ask for help and, and get started because if that's all that's, that's keeping you from doing family history work, then, then Satan's winning his battle and he's keeping us from many great and important blessings. So get started. The family history guide um, is a great way to, to auto study uh, by yourself or, or get with a consultant and, and they can help you. Um, the family history guide goes through all of the basics of family search, of ancestry.com, my heritage, find my past. Well, there's so many different ways. Um, all of our consultants train on the family history guide. It's the number one resource to, uh, to really get started and, and learn all of the ins and outs of all of the different uh, options available to us. <clears throat> In-home activities are so fun for primary kids, for youth, and even for adults. So they have three different sections. There's an about me section, my family section, and a temple section. So with uh, here, you can see the about me section. There's a, a whole activity just based on my name. Do you know the story behind your name? Uh, knowing your name can, can help give a sense of identity, et cetera. Um, uh, creating a time capsule, an all about me box. Where am I from? 
there's so many different ways to, to get started with uh, family history work. And, and sometimes we, we get so bogged down in the research, the heavy duty stuff that we forget that, that our youth need to connect in, um, in different ways. And so these in-home activities are a great way. This is on family search um, to, to do that. All the stories, um, this can be used for a variety of different things. Many times when we're going on trek or uh, having a pioneer activity, um, it's required to bring a story of a pioneer ancestor and this will help you uh, find those. But if not, uh, this is a great way to, to just find stories. So this app, um, you start, sign in with your family search uh, login information and it'll search your whole family tree for all of the stories that have been uploaded. So as you can see on the left-hand side, um, it'll tell you how many minutes it would take to read that story uh, approximately. So you can see the, the zero minute ones are just gonna be little snippets versus the four minute or the 42 minutes. Those are gonna be really deep uh, stories that are gonna take a while. But um, just go and discover some of the stories of, of our ancestors that way. It's a, it's a great way and not having to click through each of the trees and, and try to figure out where a story might be. This one just brings it all up right off the bat. Um, if you have time to actually write and compile family histories, uh, that there's a huge need for, for this. Uh, histories are, are kind of a dying art and, and we need to, to really bring them back because I don't know how many times that I've found crucial information in a family history that I wouldn't have found on a census or birth certificate or, or any other way. Family histories share some of those nuances that, that we really need. And so uh, keeping our, our family histories alive even if it's just a little snippet on each person in your family tree, um, family histories are crucial. Community histories as well. Um, creating uh, some stories about even your street. Uh, start off with your street. Uh, I live in a, a really small town and so we can do a co whole community history. Um, but, but whether it's a, a district or a barrio or, or wherever you live, uh, creating community histories are, are very important. And then your personal histories. How else are your um, kids and grandkids and future posterity gonna know who you are, what made you tick, how you overcame obstacles? Um, there, there's been many times where a struggling youth has been able to connect with a personal history of one of their ancestors and go, oh, they went through the same struggles that I've went through. It really helps connect and, um, uh, in, in new and meaningful ways. Personal histories are, are excellent because we all have history. We've all been born and, and it takes two minutes a day to, to write down a, a little bit about what we're going through. All right, now, if you have a lot of time on your hands and are ready to get to work, uh, this is uh, some amazing activities just for you. So untangling messes. Now, <laughs> sometimes, uh, Satan can really work on us and uh, get us to steer away from all of these ugly messes that, that might have been created in family search. So it, it's not for the, the faint of heart, but it, it is an amazing work to do. I, I found so many rich blessings from untangling messes that lead to many new names found in the tree, etc. And so um, if you're wanting to tackle that, get with a consultant that, that has experience untangling and uh, merging duplicates and, and get working on this. This is, this is so fun. Um, it, it's kind of just like this giant puzzle to figure out and um, it, it's a, always very rewarding connecting with our ancestors that way. And then DNA research. This is probably one of my least, uh, not favorite, uh, least known about things. I, I'm not great at DNA research. I've done my, my swab analysis, et cetera, but I don't know how to dive into it as well, but my local family history lab, the, the Burley one, has an excellent uh, uh, sister that, that does research on this all the time uh, that can help. Um, so, so get connected with either your ward consultants, your uh, uh, a local family history lab, etc. Uh, you're sure to find uh, someone that's, that can help you with DNA research. Also, the family, the FH guide, Dot com is a great way, has some beginner courses on, on that as well. Indexing. So I'm talking beginning, intermediate, advanced, foreign language indexing. I'm kind of grouping it all together. 
because there's there's so many different ways to distinguish it out. But um, I can tell you that the beginning indexing is great, especially for youth to get started, but um, those batches are kind of running out all the time. So uh, learning how to do advanced indexing with, with hard to read cursive or, or uh, non-organized uh, uh, baptistry records, et cetera, from a, uh, an old parish is, uh, there's a great need to, to have advanced indexers as well as foreign language indexing. You know, we have so many English records and we just kind of go for it and we just skip over um, the foreign language indexing. Um, I served my mission in Mexico and, and I can't tell you how many <laughs> Spanish records need indexed. Um, we, we need to help out our brothers and sisters all over the world um, by uh, indexing here. So if you've served a mission, if you know a foreign language, then it, it, it's already uh, set up for you. But if you are, if you, if you barely speak be English <laughs> like I do sometimes. You can still do foreign language indexing. It's not that difficult. And, and we have courses to, to show you how to do that. Uh, there's a great need for foreign language indexing. Um, so yeah, I, I can't emphasize that enough. Indexing is such an important part in family history work. Uh, it's kind of like the step one to get those things in and then we can attach those sources and really branch out the tree later. Community reconstitution is my new love. Um, uh, this was introduced to me by Joe Price at the BYU Record Linking Lab. Um, he has a son serving in the, the Skagit, Washington, or Oregon. I can't remember where it's at, actually. I, know, I just know it's Skagit County, um, where he's kind of going on a mission with his full-time missionary. And so um, that was a really intriguing idea for me. So I... Uh, I'm working on developing the community reconstitution program for my little community here in Malta, Idaho. We have a population of like 200, uh, depends on the year. <laughs> but um, so what we're doing is we're getting every census that has been taken here in this little town and making sure that everyone on the census is in the family tree. We're going through our, our local cemetery and making sure every internment is on the family tree and connected. We're going through all of the yearbooks and indexing them from our, our local high school here and making sure that all the deceased people are on the tree and, and indexing the rest of the yearbook as well for future generations to connect the tree later on. Um, it's such a great way to, to work with our community, but then branch out and go on full-time missions with our full-time missionaries. Uh, they work on this side of the veil and we work on the other side of the veil. Uh, a great way to get started. Oral interviews are so important to, to keep memories alive. And uh, Family Search has made that super simple with their memories app. So uh, you click into it and uh, click on that little plus button in the, the bottom right hand corner there and choose audio. And then it'll give you some topics to choose from. You can also just start recording with any question that you wanna ask, um, but those give you some, some jumping off points to, to start off. Uh, you click begin recording and then it'll um, have you push start. When you're ready to start, you can record up to five minutes and go around interviewing your grandparents or some of the old timers in your community, etc. And then afterwards, you can tag the people mentioned in the interview uh, to their family search accounts and that'll show up for uh, ours and future generations. So important to do. So that's my flow chart for family history work. Um, I hope that this helps you get started in whatever floats your boat. Um, I, I can't tell you how many times when I first started out in family history work where, where Satan really started uh, attacking strongly. Each time that I sat down at a computer ready to do family history work, I would get frustrated. I would get so upset. I would um, start working on something and just hit brick wall after brick wall after brick wall. It doesn't have to be that way. Um, I needed a, a good tutor to, to show me uh, where else I could be serving in, in, uh, in the tree, but I didn't have that. And that's why I created this flowchart was to, to help us quit hitting our heads against the, the brick wall, uh, quit kicking against the bricks. Um, there's so many different ways to serve and it doesn't have to all be hard research. Work your way up to that. Um, uh, don't get overwhelmed. Don't let Satan win because this is the most important work as President Nelson has said that we can be doing is gathering Israel. 
And so there, there's a place wherever, whatever skill level you have, whatever desires, whatever promptings and dreams you're receiving, there's a place for you in family history work and this flowchart can help. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll put my uh, email in the description, but um, welcome. Welcome to the greatest work ever. I say that in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Have a great week.